Now, let's be clear. This is a, an armed insurrection, a coup d'etat being orchestrated by uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin using the combat forces of a private military contractor uh, to forcibly remove the constitutionally um, <clears throat> mandated uh, and instituted government of Russia. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this, that uh, the events have gone far beyond what Sky News is reporting. Uh, Wagner troops have uh, pushed through the city of Vorin, uh, Vorinizh and are heading towards Moscow. They're being actively engaged by Russian air. Uh, helicopters are destroying Wagner vehicles on the highway. Uh, this isn't a machine gun nest that's being established out of Moscow. Thousands, tens of thousands of troops are being assembled, including heavy armor, artillery. Um, and Putin has basically said, take the gloves off, put this thing down and put it down now. Uh, the Chechen forces, the Ahmad special forces, are being sent to Rostov right now. Um, this is not a situation that's going to last very long. It will be violently suppressed, or at least attempted to be. Uh, Wagner made certain assumptions. Prigozhin made certain assumptions. So what a lot of people didn't know is that two days ago, prior to this, the Ukrainian uh, uh, intelligence service, um, they had a, uh, a, a series of... Um, Covert cells that were being positioned in Moscow were uncovered by the FSB, Russian security, and rounded up. It appears that these cells were supposed to be in place in Moscow so that as Prigozhin began to move towards Moscow, they would carry out a series of attacks, explosions, mm -hmm. terrorist events that would terrorize the Russian people, reinforce the notion that Putin was an ineffective leader, and therefore the people of Moscow mm -hmm. would welcome Wagner with open arms. This is a concerted effort between Wagner, the Ukrainian intelligence service, and their Western sponsors, in particular the British, to achieve uh, what they've always been looking for, which is what they call a Moscow Maidan moment. We've discussed this. The only way that Ukraine could possibly win this war is if Russia implodes. And uh, having been defeated on the battlefield, we see that, you know, kudos to them. They recruited Prigozhin. There's no doubt in my mind that Yevgeny Prigozhin is working on behalf of foreign intelligence services, carrying out their tasks, and that task is to collapse the government of uh, Vladimir Putin. I personally believe that he won't succeed, but that's what's happening this morning. Are among uh, those uh, foreign intelligence services the CIA? Of course, the CIA is there, but I think the lead agency here is uh, is the British intelligence, if for no other reason that it. Um, Look, we have to confront the fact that Joe Biden is not fully there right now. Right. And to carry out something like this, the CIA would need uh, presidential findings that would have to be articulated to Congress. And I don't think our commander in chief is positioned to do that. So the CIA, I believe, is providing uh, a supporting role to the British who have taken the lead on this because their system is a little bit more competent. Uh, before, uh, before we get to what President Putin said uh, last night, at the same time that this is happening, uh, the president of Belarus uh, fled the country. Is there also a Wagner instigated or CIA supported or both coup going on there? Well, first of all, the president of Belarus has not fled the country. That's uh, that's fake information. There's also information that Putin has fled Moscow, running to uh, St. Petersburg. That's fake information as well. Western journalists and uh, Western neocons making ass asses of themselves, <laughs> essentially. Uh, you, you, there was a massive premature ejacul ejaculation from the neocons uh, expecting that Russia is going to fall expecting that there was this civil war that was going to happen. I think this this event show how desperate the West is and also show the the Ukraine side know they're not going to win. Like when you saw the response to this, mm -hmm. this news, I would watch this whole thing like, yo, this is crazy. I'm very interested in how this is going to play out. This guy about to get fucking whacked. This guy going to get destroyed. Like soon as he, soon as like the news of uh, Provogan, uh, uh planning a civil war and trying to dethrone Putin, I'm like, okay, yeah. How long is this guy going to last? How long is this guy going to last? And Putin was not playing around. He said, this is like high treason. Um, but one of the biggest uh, lies that coming from the West regarding this event is that Putin is somehow weak 
Are you somehow weakened because of this? Now, I want people to understand that war is a messy thing. Here we go. I'll pop that image out. CJ about to come back. Uh, war is a messy thing. We're in a, a massive superpower that have nuclear capabilities that work with fucking crazy motherfuckers like the Wagner Group that just go to war. Like, you, you got know, they just go to war. Guys. <laughs> well, that's Wagner. They go to fucking war. And, and it's hilarious watching the West and the liberal establishment who, like, in France, uh, in, in England, they're deemed terrorist groups, the Wagner Group. And whenever you talk about Nazis in Ukraine, whenever you talk about the Azov Battalion and their crimes, the liberal class will what about ism to Wagner, CJ? I know you know this as well. They say, well, yes. you guys... You guys calling out us arming Nazis in Ukraine. What about Wagner Group? What about the terrorists in the Wagner Group? And my response to that always shut that down real easy. I'm not supporting arming the Wagner Group. <laughs> we are calling out as off of the Nazis in Ukraine. But we are arming them, guys. That's the problem. Right. So that, that, that excuse never made any, any sense. But Wagner was enemy number one. Enemy number one. They said, well, you yeah, we got Nazis on our side, but they got Wagner. They went from that, CJ, to saying Wagner was freedom fighters, that, that they are some sort of hero <laughs> saying I'm doing. And I'm watching shit this weekend, CJ. I'm like, bro, this is fucking, I cannot wait to jump on RBN. It was clown shit. It was clown yeah. shit. And, and the thing is, a lot of people with this story, they, this is the first time they're hearing, we call it Wagner, but I think they pronounce it Wagner or something like Wagner, that, but yeah. Wagner, Wagner or something like that. But um this is not their first conflict being involved this is like they've been involved in multiple conflicts this is maybe the one that most americans have heard about them but this is not their first conflict what do you got there uh Nick? i was just playing this up while you speak this is some examples of uh the premature ejaculation coming on uh, from the <laughs> west this is from the amazing foreign policy thinker and apple bottom you know her track record of getting things right <laughs> <laughs> and Apple Bottom, right? This story in, in Atlantic, because Atlantic, like, if you're a neocon, we will publish you. That's what we do. Russia slides into civil war. Is Putin facing his Tsar Nicholas II moment? <laughs> but the thing yeah. is, uh, Scott Ritter kind of alludes to this. So, so, what you're seeing, Nick, in media that you're pointing out, how they're this premature ejaculation, according to his theory, and what Scott Ritter said in that clip, that's a, like, you know, that's a theory. According to his theory, this is what this is all about, so that our newspapers can come out and say, look, Russia's imploding pretty much. And that's just, that's essentially, and now you see corporate media kind of falling in line with that theory. If I don't know if it's true or not, but that's his theory. Yeah. Um, as soon as I saw this, I thought CIA. <laughs> I didn't even, like tweet it out because I didn't have any evidence. <laughs> and we, we're going to know the truth about this very soon. Uh, but that should be our reaction. That should be our reaction, is that... <laughs> It, it should be, it's the CIA until it's proven not to be yes. the CIA is how I look at it. And I do have another clip that is from RT. Now, with media, Nick, um, and you're pointing out, I don't want you to go through more headlines, but with media, we have to understand if it's coming from the United States media, don't believe that whatsoever. <laughs> at all. Whatsoever. Like, don't even, don't even, it, it's better for you not to listen to it than to listen to it and let some of that propaganda get into your mind. But I did find this clip on RT, and this is after everything is has already is over. I wanna, so now uh, they're kind of looking back at it. Go ahead, if you're going to say something. I, I'm going to just add this, and then we, we can play the clip just so I can uh, uh, finish Absolutely. my overall thought. Was people were saying that this shows that Putin was weak, and I was I was mentioning how operating and running a war, a giant nuclear uh, superpower government like Russia is obviously hard, especially when you got crazy motherfuckers like the Wagner and uh, Provovin, uh that that can cause trouble. But the main thing that I was looking at and the reason why I, I didn't think Russia was in any, any trouble was that Russia and Putin has widespread support for the war. And, and, and many people say this is Putin's war. Putin freaked out. But no, like if you look at the people in government in Russia, uh, when, when you look at their Congress, when you look at their leaders, Everyone support this war. And then if you talk to every single one of them, they will sound just like Putin. They will sound just like someone like, yeah, do you know the NATO got involved with Ukraine in 2014? We told, you, uh, we told the West not to have NATO encroachments on the border. So this is a unified Russian uh, goal. And this is why they, they want to dehumanize Putin and, and, uh, and turn to black and white evil nonsense. Because if you do that, if you make it 
just one villain, it's easier to demonize the objective. But if you explain that they have national defense interests, we had when we a lot of Russians have relatives in Ukraine that are ethnic Russian who are being uh, fucking violently suppressed by the Azov movement, the fascist movement in Ukraine, and this something that the national uh, culture supports. That's why Putin has a 70, 75% approval rating, which is unheard of in the West. Unheard of. So the thing is, like, if you're going to have a, a civil war or mutiny, uh, not only do you need military strength, you need military officers to rebel, and then you need public sentiment. And at no point did Wagner ever had that. You know what I mean? At no point did they ever have that. So I'll, I'll, that's why I said in the beginning when I when this popped out, like, holy shit. This is extremely interesting because this guy about to get fucked up. This guy yeah. said, like, it's going to be, trust me, guys, I'm not going to admit this. I'm not going to deny this. This is embarrassing for Putin on a global stage to have yes. someone of leadership, someone well esteemed as this Wagner leader come out. I'm not, there's no denying that. Like, that's why Ukraine, the West run. This is a global embarrassment on Russia. It did not affect the Ukraine war and power dynamics at all, though. You got, do, do, you, do you think. But go ahead, go ahead. You, you no, what I was gonna say, do you think um with this happening with Wagner, do you think like countries in the future are gonna second think hiring hired mis- like mercenaries for this type of work? Because these are just hired mis- so if they're hired, that means they don't have any sort of loyalty that a, a, a sort of homegrown and, and soldiers would have. Are go ahead. In the story, especially in the West, they're not talking about this. Uh one of the reasons why this sued over really quickly is because a lot of Wagner troops strongly believe in Russia's agenda and Putin's agenda. A lot of them was confused during this whole event. And then there's the contract issue as well, where you had the Russian military forces that want to include Wagner into the Russian defense forces. So there are a lot of theories that a lot of conflicts started from that. And through negotiation, they got a lot of security assurances. And, and the security assurances part is why it's even more hilarious, guys, that liberals in the NAFO left was cheering on Wagner because you guys know that Wagner was criticizing Putin from the right mm-hmm. on the Ukraine war. I, I, I'll hear this guy's name. I, I'm not sure to pronounce it. Provolgin. Provolgin. Sorry. I'm a practice. Yeah, we all know. I'll, I'll put a, a picture up in I'm a minute. I'm, 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 it's tough, though. Because I read my news most of the time. That's why it's a struggle. But I've seen this guy in headlines a few times, and every time I've seen him in headlines, it was him criticizing Russia. Like, why are we not? Why are we slow rolling this Ukraine thing? We need to fucking yeah. kill these Nazis and these, and these Ukrainian scumbags. And so, if you got, like, if, if liberals thought Putin was bad, there was no elegance among uh, uh, the leaders of the Wagner group when it came to the Ukraine war. We need to slaughter these motherfuckers right now. We need more weapons, and you are pussyfooting this war. And that was what everything I heard from these people. And so when they was negotiating for security clearances, they are asking for a more they're asking for more weapons, asking for more technical support, and more support for the Russian government in order to subjugate Ukraine more. And now they're closer to Kiev now. That's why people saying this was some sort of 3D chess by Wagner because they wanted to increase their presence and their power in the war. And this is the best way to do it because now they they negotiated they negotiate negotiated contracts with the Russian Defense Force, the Russian Ministry as well. Mm-hmm. So they're getting incorporated instead of just being private uh, contractors. they get getting more security insurances and they're co- closer to, to Kiev. As all this is happening, which is not good news for the West, you have liberals like, oh my God, this is amazing. Oh my God, Putin is getting weak. I'm like, dude, this is hilarious. This is hilarious <laughs> that they don't know what, what's happening here. Uh, and in Russia, if anything, is stronger and more united for, uh, in, in their conquest to take out Ukraine. If anything, there's more pressure on Putin. This is why I say it's not all good for Putin. Because now there's more pressure to wipe out, to get the Ukraine war finished, to put more uh, effort into this war than they have been already doing already with a slow roll uh, 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 strategy that many people in the Wagner group uh, disagree with. But anyway, let's continue the clip. I'm, there's, there's much to say on this. I, I, I'm, I'm yeah. happy. So go ahead. No, I'm sure I'm sure you'll you'll um, or both of us will probably stop it at points uh, just to, to make. But what I like about this video is because they kind of re- go through the events by the, day the time gonna, it happens. Go ahead. I'm going to read this comment. This is a good one. This is from Kroki. Putin, and this is my thought as well, because it's, when people on the West say that Putin has been weakened by this, it's just pure hopium, pure hopium. 
I will admit, and anyone who's rational will admit this is an embarrassing international po- politics moment mm-hmm. for Putin. Like, politically, this does not look good for him, right? But in terms of, like, actually changing the strength of the Ukraine war, uh, his, his grip among Russian power, this shows that the Russian people, the Russian government, and the military forces are more united behind Putin. And I'm going to mm-hmm. show you guys a quote I found 20 minutes before the stream where Putin, like, yeah, this is this moment is actually great because it shows how unified we are. We had a we had an attempted coup, an armed uh, uh, uprising, and it was squashed immediately because people said, calm the fuck down. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, so that showed that Putin has unified strength. Now, compare what happened in France and in uh, England. I'm going to have a, another TikTok video on this tomorrow. Like, when you look at France and England, there's massive protests, NATO protests, nonstop. You got the, the UK, they cannot keep a prime minister. There's, there's a story I'm going to cover here uh, in one of our stories later after our foreign po- policy hour where Democrats are freaking out. I don't know if you saw this story as well, CJ. Democrats are freaking out that Trump's going to win again. Because there's another yeah. poll. There's another poll that showed Biden oh, up by three. Oh, just came out. Yeah. yeah I think you, I mean, you may have seen it too. There's no poll that showed Biden's up by three, but it, which is not good because you need to win the electoral poll. Uh, right. <laughs> so if Biden's up by three in the national poll, that means he loses. So, so this poll right. came out, and dumb liberals like, yeah, Biden is up. Meanwhile, and everyone who knows what's going on, like, holy shit, this is horrible for us. Anyway, we can yeah, I think it's something like um, I think it's something like in a national poll, the Democrats have to be up by like something like six or seven percent just for it to be even. Yeah, so if yeah. anything less than that, that means that the GOP is up. Like you don't want that to be at all. But this yeah, clip so breaks point- down some of the events. But go ahead. I'm oh, sorry, 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 CJ. But my point, my point was, and then we get to the video was France just said uh, Emmanuel Macron completely lost fa- faith for his people. Protest all the time that not covered in the West. The UK cannot keep a leader. In the United States, we about to get Donald fucking Trump again. Yeah. And you guys talking about Putin is weakened? The neoliberal establishment is weakened. But sorry, go ahead, CJ. I just, I just had to make no, it. No, but it, like you, you said that, I got to insert this part. And I think this is why it's such a. I just feel like over the years they've been going after Trump, but it's been an uptick ever since he's been like, no, I'm going to stop the Ukraine war. Now, imagine this, Nick. The Ukraine war is sort of like testing ground for the real war against China. Yeah, if, for sure. if, if, if Trump comes in, do you think that all that kind of alters their plan? It has already been altered because the first plan was to elect Hillary Clinton and have had this war three or four years earlier than than, than it actually happened. Now, if Trump comes back in, he kind of foils their plans again. And that's why you see all of this uptick in rhetoric against him and just the talking points about uh, Trump and winning again. And there's it's a real fear factor. And that's why I'm like, they're really going to come after Cornell West because he oh, they really started. is going to pull the rug out of, of, of Biden is already weak as fuck. He's Dude, already weak. Sorry, CJ, but it's what I learned. No, I already see liberals. Re- rewriting Dr. Cornell West's history. <laughs> like, they're, like, they're already doing it. They're already pretending that yeah. he's like this right, long time, right wing. <laughs> <agent. laughs> we'll prepare a segment. We're going to have some, we're going to do it throughout, throughout the week, uh, but you guys will see what I'm talking about. But CJ, go ahead. We can get to the clip now. Yeah, let's play the video. Okay, let's get to the video. Uh, this is a pretty good video. It's about four, five, almost five minutes long. I don't think we're going to play all of it, but we certainly want to revisit some of the events of what happened. And yes, let's sir. listen. The bloodshed here in Rostov and Don have been averted. Members of uh, Wagner private military company have now left the city. We are right next to the headquarters of the military here in Rostov and Don, and it's now back under their control. You can see military police uh, uh, here. You can see the guys are back to work. Uh, however, the consequences of this armed mutiny remains. So take a look at this uh, gate. It's been destroyed by tanks of the Wagner military uh, group. Uh, there are tank tracks uh, on the street as well. I must say, Nick, this is a pretty clean city if the Wagner group was really trying to do damage. This shit looks, this yeah. looks like a regular city, like nothing happened. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know if you how much you were paying attention on Twitter, but uh, you know our uh, good friend of the show, Fiorella Isabel from the Convo Couch. Yes, he lives in Moscow. Yes, uh, there was Carl, uh, Carl Za, also uh-huh. friend of the show. We had him on a few times. He's in Moscow for whatever fucking like Carl <laughs> Za should be doing the fucking thing. Like 
Yeah. He be yeah. Carl Zah <laughs> is every fucking where. I don't know how he fucking does it. He He's fucking everywhere. everywhere. Like I see, I see, I will see a clip from him. Like, yeah, I'm in Taiwan right now. What? How the fuck <laughs> you getting over there? He like, yeah, I'm in Beijing. You know, record, be report on the ground. Now, uh, Carl Zah, he was like, I'm in Moscow. I'm like, how the fuck is he doing this? But anyway, he, so Carl Zah, Fiorella, Isabel, there was the two people I saw that was on the ground. It was like, as the Western media was saying. Moscow's on fire, tanks is in the street, gunfire in the streets. They're like showing pictures, selfie, like, bro, everything is normal. <laughs> Let's go back to my original uh, thesis in the beginning where I said, don't, like, whenever there's any breaking, especially foreign policy news, take everything that the Western media says to you with a grain of salt. Guys, if it wasn't for the internet, they would be just, they would just be committing massive lies. Yeah. Like, if it wasn't for the internet, we would be thinking, we will be, we will believe that there would be there was a civil war and they're fighting in Moscow still to this day. And I am not bullshitting you. They will straight up lie to us and say that there's gunfire, uh, there are Russians dying, bombs in the street, buildings on fire. You, you want to know how I know? The Korean War is a, was a great example. Yeah. They straight up lied to us about everything that happened. They committed a genocide against the Korean people. And then you had the Vietnam War, which was the first televised war, where you had uh, uh, Vietnamese uh, civilians writing notes on on trees to United States soldiers, telling them like you 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 guys have been lied to. We have done nothing to you. We we are you guys are in, uh, invading us and killing us for no reason because everything that we was told by the government and by our media about the war was a lie. Was, was like was a straight up lie. But people had no idea. They had no internet, so they just they just believe bullshit. So if it wasn't for the internet, we would be they they would still be telling you. That there's Russians dying in Moscow right now. That Wagner is desperately fighting Russia. <laughs> they wouldn't give a fuck. They'll just lie to us. That's what they did in the past. Yeah. Go ahead, CJ. All right, let's continue. Well, but the roads have been de blocked. Now, of course, uh, the situation here was uh, very tense on uh, Saturday. And I tried to gauge people's opinion about what happened here. They need to sort out their relationship after victory. It broke my heart seeing what happened. We were worried, but now everything is fine. We are very glad that everything worked out safely and without bloodshed. In general, the Wagner forces are not bad. They just did a bad thing. I think what took place should never have happened. Though they behave calmly and polite to citizens. They let people that come up to their vehicles, take pictures. But nevertheless, I'm against such actions. They don't improve the authority of our country. Here in the center of the city and on the outskirts of the city as well, people are now able to move around freely. However, well, already, on Saturday, already doing the that. situation here. This is very quick, and I'll get back to the video. Yeah. One one of the things that Fiorella and Carl Zah was posting was they like, yo, there's people walking down the streets like life is normal, <laughs> nothing changed. Like, for real, go on the timeline, it'll, it'll do it justice. They were literally just posting and showing the evidence. There's many other international people I, I'm not too familiar with that was doing the same as well. They're like, as the West saying that Moscow is fucking burning, people just going to the store, walking down the streets, <laughs> you see how they, they were trying to present a completely different narrative. But go ahead, look at the good thing you see, Let's, uh, I, I'm going to come back to this point, 137. But to your point, even in this video, watch this lady. In the, she's taking a selfie right there. You see her? <laughs> <laughs> she's taking a selfie. They're, they're taking uh, pictures by these things. Man, they, this is not. This is not what the what the West is trying to make it out to be. But let's let's finish the video. They're gonna go through the uh, chronological order. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna scoot it forward. To where Take we... a look at how it all happened. <laughs> Hang on, one second. Fired. We heard uh, bangs and explosions as well as people ran for their lives. Take a look at how it all happened. Claims Russian military attack announces march on justice to that city. Russian defense minister denies his allegation. Wagner Group moved towards Special Operation Command Center. Or Wagner Group, Authorities open criminal case we call against on Wagner the PMC Chief. fighters not to make irreparable mistakes, to stop any forceful actions against the Russian people, not to carry out Prigozhin's criminal and treacherous orders, and to take measures to detain him. 
Frogner, I'm sorry, talks with Deputy Defense Minister and Military. Wagner captures Russian Southern Command Center. Rostov military facilities, including its airfield, were taken under control. We want to talk with the Chief of Staff and Defense Minister, but they are not here. We have blocked the Rostov region and are headed to Moscow. Russian law enforcement raid Wagner headquarters in St. Petersburg. Special police de uh, detachment deployed to monitor situation. Several more regions launch counter terrorist operation measures. Russian president addresses the nation. What we are facing now is treason. Big ambitions and personal interests have led to the betrayal of one's country, one's nation, and the cause for which Wagner's fighters and commanders were fighting along with the armed forces. I repeat, any internal rebellion is a deadly threat to our state, to us as a nation. It's a blow against Russia, against our people, and our action to defend our motherland against such a threat will be harsh. Wagner column crosses Leipzig. I don't know that name, region near Moscow. I don't know the name of that city. Gunfire heard in that city. Wagner reportedly targets Russian attack helicopters. Moscow uh, region prepares defensive lines, numerous checkpoints set up along highways. Gozi agrees to leave after mediation talks with Belarusian president. So that's the end of the video. I think it kind of sums up and give for those that have no idea what was going on. It does kind of give a, a yeah. chronological order of like the things that happened. And even when they had the tanks, if you notice in the back, there were civilians just kind of walking around. It, it didn't seem like uh, some of the people, I'm not going to say all, it was at points where there was tanks and soldiers and they were still people kind of just walking around. So I'm not sure how much, yeah. uh, how much fear that, that put into the, the locals around there. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, is it really that much different than the militarized police that we have around here resisting right. our people on cop city? So of course, when this happened, as I said, this is a, a big threat. Uh, something that you take seriously, <laughs> like if you pull it, so you put, you make sure you have your security in place. Uh, I think the West saw that, and they overreacted. Like that'd be the same thing seeing militarized police and cop cities say, "Oh my God, there's a civil war in Atlanta." Like that's the same thing. I, mm. and I, maybe I think that's a I think that close comparison. I'm gonna show you guys the more recent statements. I saw this literally before the stream. Mm -hmm. Trying to dig up uh, the most up to date news for you guys, and this goes to my point why many people are making an argument. I kind of agree with this that this does not show that Putin is weak. To show that war and running a nuclear arm superpower is a complicated thing, especially when you're dealing with fucking militant groups like Wagner, right? It's just not easy. But this is, I'm gonna just read it up like the probably first two paragraphs, right? Uh, this is what he said today We have shown supreme consolidation of society and executive authorities at all levels. Practically all Russian society, everyone was united by their sense of responsibility for the fate of the country. Now, this is what Putin was saying in his speech where he was calling him a traitor. Where he said, how can you do this right now where our state as a country, as Russia people, find the neo-Nazi menaces on the line? You choose right now to do this? That's what he was. That was the theme he was getting at. And I think it resonated. That's why most people support him in this country regarding his military operation. Because it's an existential crisis, and many people on the West would admit it. As I showed I, on Nick at night, I did a segment where Fox News would say, "Yeah, Russia views NATO encroachment on the border as an existential crisis because it is." Anyway, let me continue the statement. Since the very beginning of these events, all the necessary decisions to neutralize the threat were taken and to protect the constitutional order, lives, and safety of the civilians. 
And this, part, this is the part why you see headlines I showed you before where people thought, like, uh, this was the civil war in Russia because obviously you take this threat seriously if you're Russia. And this is why I was watching this unfold during this weekend. And I'm like, this dude, anyone who's trying to do this rebellion about get fucking slaughtered. And this is show you how disgusting the liberal order is because they're just cheering for chaos. Like, so they know Wagner are terrorists because they got them on their terrorist group list. So it shows they don't care about the Russian people because they were more than happy and excited to see a civil war in Russia where Russians are killing Russians. And then when Russians didn't kill Russians in Russia, in Moscow, you saw massive disappointment. Massive disappointment. Um, second paragraph, do be the last one I read. Could it show the mindset that Putin has? And a lot of it is PR. <laughs> Obviously, this is you want to puff your chest up, make sure you're strong as a country. But when I when I analyze it, it as in a neutral way, we we see the strong connection between Russia and Belarus. When you see uh the people in high chain military command, multiple politicians and the society at large reject this coup attempt and in favor of uniting behind a solid agenda and goal of taking all the Azov neo-Nazi Western NATO scum. I think that show how united and powerful Russia actually is. And if the West was actually hoping that this would be the, the miracle Hail Mary they need to win the war, it just show how weak they are, that they need this to win. Right? And do you think Putin just in here hoping that there's a United States civil war that the NATO civil war to win? No, he's, he's not weak enough to hedge his bets on that. Like the NATO Western regimes apparently are. Last paragraph I'll read and I'll move on because I got a lot of cover. Uh, the armed mutiny would have been suppressed in any case despite their loss of reason. The participants could not understand that, including the fact that they engage in criminal actions, splitting apart the country, which is now facing colossal external threats and pressure. You guys see this talking point mm -hmm. that Putin is using? Whether you agree with it or not, I, I, I more agree with Like I see exactly what you're doing here. But you, this, this talking point is extremely effective at shutting out any public support that Wagner would have gotten during this coup, which is why when I saw this going down, I saw them using this talking point. I'm like, dude, this is going to land. And, it, and their little coup is going to fall flat, exactly what it did, because most people, including the Wagner groups that were associated into the military, Russian military forces, because they agree that Russia is facing a colossal threat, they don't want to weaken the country over what? This guy? Over one guy disapproving or Putin? No, no. They believe it's not worth it. And once again, we whether my, my personal opinion does not matter. I am telling you guys what the people in Russia are feeling, the situation with Wagner and the Russian government. Right? So uh actually I think I, I cut off there because you guys see his appeal. It's a very long statement, it's a like five minute video. But I I'm just, I just want to give you guys I, I I'll read the last part. Actually, yeah, the last part is a good way to conclude. Look at this part here. He said, but I'm sure that this will be a choice of the Russian warriors who realize their tragic mistakes. I'm grateful to uh, the president of Belarus, uh, Lukashenko, for his effort, for his efforts and contribution to the peaceful resolution of the situation. I've been learning more about Lukashenko. He nationalized a lot of his industries. Like he straight up, uh, Belarus did not. And I'm learning more about Belarus. And that's something I'm trying to work on. Belarus did not go through neoliberal shock therapy of capitalism. Uh, because they rejected Western colonialism and having American capital and com uh, companies exploit their workers. And they side more on the side of the Soviet <coughs> Union, Russia, and more of the DPRK, China. And this is why the West hate them. So I've, I've been learning about Brill. I'm like, man, they got some based ass geopolitical politics. I don't know a lot about the domestics, but on the geopolitical stage, I see Bill Lewis been based as hell. And that's why Lukashenko came together to make this deal. And when you see the Western media talk about Lukashenko, they have nothing but disdain for that motherfucker. I've been watching how they cover him. I saw more and Joe. They're like, he does a Putin fucking shit. <laughs> he, like, they're talking about him like he has no agency, as if he's not wedging like what geopolitical world order had his best country's heart, right? Like, it, it obviously, in his best country's interest to follow the Russian, Chinese path. But if, if you don't bow to the West, if you don't demonize their enemies, you're just uh, you just uh, reduced to being a shill of their enemies. So why is he a Putin shill? Why is he a Putin sycophant? As they they labeled this guy in the media that for uh, the mm. escalated situation. Why is it uh, every time you talk about man number crime, we're gonna use this. We're gonna use the standard. Every time you talk about Boris Johnson, you say Boris Johnson, the sip of Joe Biden. 
How about that? How about we do that with every single European politician? Men of Macron, a simp of the United States. He's a puppet of the United States. Why don't they say that? Because that's essentially what it is. The neocons are in shambles after promising this Russian coup. And, prom- and, and, and I think it showed their desperation. Like That's just my point of view. Like they promising a win? They're promising a dub. They're putting the ones up. They're putting the ones up in Ukraine. We got this. But the ones up, we got this. So as that prediction is failing, as the Ukrainian counteroffensive continues to be pathetic and they continue to walk it back, you they see this event happen and they are unbelievable, unbelievably giddy. Oh, my God, Russia's about to kill each other again. They're super excited about that. Then that did happen. Look, here's just a few headlines. This is Alex uh, Rubenstein. The expert says the walls are closing in on Putin. <laughs> Trust the science. Putin's armor has been pierced. Uh, here's another one. Provolgen's mutiny is the beginnings of Putin's end. <laughs> the walls are closing in on Putin. <laughs> the wall, like, man, and there's so many of these headlines. This, like, this is a uh, cope right here. Uh, I wish I could show you like all the cope headlines of this morning. Like, it, it, like it's like the hangover. They wake up with a hangover this morning, and like, oh, uh, so what happened? Well, I know we said <laughs> that it was gonna be a coup in Russia. Don't uh, don't unsubscribe. Don't we not we not lying to you? Promise. Don't unsubscribe. I know we lied to you guys before when we said that there's gonna be a coup in Russia, but trust me, we got explanation why right, coup, coup fails. <laughs> Now you now you made the same analysis I just made. And now you explain how Provolgen didn't have the mass, uh, didn't have to mass an unsellable force on the Kremlin, but he did have to make it a victory appear inevitable. So Provolgen never had the will of the Russian people. So when I first heard the story, I was like, "This guy about to get slaughtered. A lot of people going to die unnecessarily." Right? It's kind of tragic. Meanwhile, they're giddy. Yeah, Russia's gonna die because they're sick. They cheer for Russians dying. They're extremely xenophobic. They wanted it to happen. Then it didn't happen. Now they're like, oh my god, so why why this fucking loser then wasn't successful? <laughs> anyway, I, I think the couple of learning. They seem they disappointed. Video. Yeah, uh, they seem disappointed. <laughs> yeah. So uh this is another video from RT very recent. I think it was today or yesterday, after everything had happened, and they're talking about the media and, and just it's just funny. You can see the headline there. U.S. expected Wagner mutiny attempt to be a lot more violent and bloody. That's the headline. So let's listen. From bad to good, in the blink of an eye, Western media appears to be grappling with an internal dilemma regarding its own convictions. One minute branding those fighting on the front lines against Ukrainian forces as Nazis, but the moment they turned their guns around and were marching full steam towards the Kremlin, they were suddenly seen as rebels with a cause, and their evil background was conveniently ah. forgotten. And while Terror Alarm, an accredited private security firm, claims that their tweets are AI generated and with no agenda, in less than a day, they went from calling the group freedom fighters when the mutiny started to labeling them as terrorists <laughs> after an agreement was reached. But this sudden change of discourse did not go unnoticed online. Western media never disappoint. When the march began, they became Wagner forces and freedom fighters. After the agreement, they became terrorists again. It's hilarious how Wagner Group turned from a genocidal militia committing war crimes to an anti-corruption rebellion group in the Western media. If NATO had the chance, they will arm Wagner and call them freedom fighters. Wait, so are Wagner back to being evil Nazis again? I just bought all the Wagner equals Brave Freedom Fighters merchandise. (laughs) And let's add to that that apparently the U.S. planned to postpone sanctions against the Wagner group the moment it appeared to be against the Russian government. Wow. They had planned. I know you're you're off screen. They had planned to... They delayed the sanctions against the Wagner group when they saw this uh, happening. It's so funny. And Caitlin, that's, that's joke, why I said this always. is CIA, <laughs> man. Like when I see, when I saw shit like this, it's like, yeah, this is definitely some fucking infilt- uh, West infiltration technique, CIA shit right here. Once again, they got the CIA got twenty thousand officers on the books, on the books, guys. So and so that's why it makes no sense when people call you conspiracy theorists when you. 
think the CIA up to something. So do you think the 20,000 officers that they have on the books are just sitting around twirling their thumbs doing nothing? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, I think they might be trying to get involved in one of the biggest conflicts that we've seen in our generation. That's just me. And remember, that's 20,000 on the books that on you can books. find on Google, nigga. You know what I mean? They got off the book. <laughs> God knows. <laughs> uh, probably twice that. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, that's so funny. All right. The worst violator of human rights across the globe. I gotta say, the shout out to Saeed. He is he's great. Um, I, I read we tweet tweet him all the time. He has a lot of great stuff, especially when it comes to Iran. Oh, yeah. Is the United States and its Western allies, because they are the most hypocritical. They speak about human rights. They preach about human rights. They claim to be the great supporters of human rights, but they will do they will support the most dirty of the dirty if it suits their purposes oh but the amusement does not end with the united states alone mikhail podolyak the esteemed advisor to ukrainian president has been on quite a journey merely a month ago he was labeling wagner as terrorist suddenly it's the exact opposite the very same group is now miraculously at the helm of a noble counter-terrorist operation. Prigozhin's Wagner counter-terrorist operation on the territory of Russia has already led to the capture of Rostov, several federal capture? highways, the headquarters of the Southern District and SMO. The split between the elites is too obvious. Agreeing and pretending that everything is settled won't work. Prigozhin's perfect took swung. It is not possible to go forward. It is impossible to go back. To stand still, they will simply be destroyed. Ammunition is not given. What remains? Be an officially recognized terrorist group and wait for the finale. And, and we'll stop it there. But you get you get the point of the video. It goes on for another two minutes. Just, just giving examples of the ridiculousness of it. But we get the justice. The same thing, Nick, you were alluding to. Like, yeah. it's, a cult, it's pure cult that's going on right now. But go ahead. Yeah, so I want uh, to finish the the uh, Wagner segment. Unless you have anything else, I'll, no, I'm gonna anything. play a good clip of uh, George Galloway. I found uh, just a, a one minute video. Him kind of summing it up. I think I think this is a funny one minute summary. It was the day of the premature ejaculation, <laughs> an orgiastic fervor of jerks all <laughs> over the world, but particularly in the English speaking world, one after another. These journalists, analysts, and politicians, some of them superannuated, lined up to leap over the cliff lemming-like with their absolutely catastrophically wrong takes on what was happening in Russia. Not that it's put them off. The Sunday papers were as if Saturday night had never even happened. <laughs> and the head of Wagner, who went from being the leader of rapist murdering scum <laughs> on the FBI terrorist list, then spent a glorious few hours as a freedom fighter, is back on the terrorist list. And from what I hear, sleeping on a bench. In meds, you think I'm joking? We've got the exclusive picture. Uh -oh. Coming up, fasten your seatbelts. I think it, he, like George Galloway, <laughs> I think he, he nailed it on this on that one-minute monologue.